for those of you who have been following on uh, the Sunday messages that have been been on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and on our church website, I started a series several weeks ago about heaven. I've been preaching about heaven. We don't hear a lot about heaven much anymore today. And uh, I shared on a previous message when my wife and I were young and we would go to church. It's hardly ever Sunday when the preacher didn't say something about heaven. And so people in the old church, I call it, kept heaven on their mind because a lot of them could not have some of the accoutrements of life. And so they look forward to a better day and a better place. Today we've gotten kind of comfortable and we've kind of lost sight of eternity. And some things right here lately have reminded us that this world and the system of the world is passing away. But God has a place where we can spend eternity. Life is short. And I cannot even say that eternity is a long time because eternity is not time. Eternity is eternity. The Bible is the only authoritative book that speaks with authority as to what happens after this life is over. The Bible is the only one. So that's our source for knowing what happens when we leave this life and all of us are going to have to leave here and so we need to be ready for eternity and we ought to have heaven as our goal I want you to look at a familiar passage of scripture today that you've heard many times before and I want to visit it today St. John chapter 14 St. John chapter 14 St. John chapter 14, I want to read verses 1, 2, and 3. And this is a scripture you hear mostly at funerals. I want to take it out the funeral context and bring it to the alive context. Because we need to hear it and we need to understand it. I'm talking today about the prepared place for prepared people. The prepared place for prepared people. St. John chapter 14 verse 1. St. John 14 verse 1. The S-U-N is coming out. And the S-O-N is in the parking lot. St. John 14 verse 1. If you have it, say amen. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. One thing we have learned in this modern success oriented society, we have learned that some of the most successful people on earth are goal setters, people who set goals, people who have objectives and people who work towards those goals. If you don't have a target, it is certain that you won't hit it. But if you have goals and objectives in life, it gives you something to work toward, it gives you something to look forward to, gives you something to prepare for. Everybody should have some long-term goals, long-term goals. In other words, everyone should have some things that they are looking down the road to that they can adjust their conduct and way of life to in the present to help them to achieve their long-term goal. Every child of God should have as a long-term goal going 
to heaven when this life is over. That should be all of us. All of us should have that same long-term goal to make heaven our eternal destination. Because everybody is going to have an eternal destination. Now, there's one problem with human nature, and one of the problems with human nature is a lot of times we are short-sighted. We just look at the present, we get caught up in the scene, the Bible tells us we should not get so involved with what is seen, but we should keep our spiritual eyes on what is not seen because the things that are seen are temporal, the things that are not seen are eternal. But part of human nature brings us to a place where we want instant gratification and immediate pleasure. Again, one of the problems with current society is we don't think about long-term consequences. We like to live non-consequential lives. In other words, we live today like there is no tomorrow. We live today, many people, like there is no eternity. And because of this, many people don't have a heavenly perspective because we are so caught up in the scene. We are so caught up in the uh, immediate gratification that we get immediate pleasures and again we forget sometimes about long-term negative consequences and even though sometimes people know there are long-term negative consequences people still continue to do crazy things like smoke and drink and do drugs and overeat engage in risky and unsafe sexual practices and a lot of times people know that destruction can come from this but we forget that there are consequences to short-term non-consequential behavior short-term thinking can mess you up i'm gonna say it again short-term thinking can actually mess you up but when you have a long-term goal it keeps you on a track it keeps you on a path it keeps you being steadfast and unmovable it actually helps you to adjust your conduct in the present when you have a long-term goal and every child of god should have a long-term goal of going to heaven when this life is over. You're going to have to go somewhere. And so I know I'm talking to saved folks, so let me give you an example that can maybe bring this a little more in focus. Suppose you received a call and you were told, and it was true, it wasn't one of these calls like we get today. We get a call and it says, you have won a cruise all expenses paid you don't have to pay a thing you don't have to do a thing we're going to send you the ticket to the airport to get to the port you get a one number a, a number one accommodations everything is taken care of and you will get to go on this cruise next december we're almost in March now, but next December, the end of the year, you're going to cruise to a beautiful paradise-like port of call and be on one of the most finest cruise ships and everyone's going to cater to all your needs. Now, I'm going to tell you what you will start doing. But even though the cruise is going to be next December, you will actually start making preparations now. In your mind, you would start thinking about how your cruise is going to be and how you're going to enjoy. You start going places and in stores and you might see something, even though it's March, you might see some beach wear. You say, I'm going, I can get that for my cruise that I'm going to have next December. You start collecting clothing items and other things. You will start making preparations for your long-term goals. And for, for every now and then, you would even remind yourself, in December, I'm going 
on a cruise. You'd have that on your mind. And I'm telling the truth. So we need to come to the place that we need to have heaven on our mind. Now you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared. Now I'm going to make a statement that I'm going to explain. It's going to sound kind of strange, but I'm going to explain it. You need to be prepared for heaven. Watch this. Even if you're not ready. And that sounds like a contradiction. You need to be prepared for heaven, even if you're not ready for heaven. And what do you mean by that, Pastor Lawson? Well, the Bible says in the book of Amos that you need to prepare to meet your God. Prepare to meet your God. That word prepare means you need to get things in order. That's what the word means. Get stuff in order. Get things in line. Get things in order. Prepare to meet your God. That's what we need to do. We need to get our spiritual houses in order. Someone in the Bible was told, get your house in order. We need to make sure our houses are in order because one day we gonna have to meet God. Prepare to meet you. Prepare to meet your God. Get prepared. Do whatever you have to do. Get stuff in order. Get your house in order because you're going to have to meet God. All of us gonna have to meet Him. So we need to be prepared, even if we are, even if we are not ready. Now, what does that mean? Now. Prayerfully, we are prepared, but we don't want to go today. How many of y'all are prepared, but you don't want to go today? You're not ready. You're not hearing me. Let me give you some scripture so you can understand this. Timothy said, because you think preparedness and being ready is the same thing. Second Timothy, Paul, when he knew his life, was about to end. He knew it was over. He knew he was about to be translated. Apostle Paul made this statement. He says, for I am now ready. He said, I'm ready. I am now ready to be offered. And he said, the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. And listen to what he said. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. See, when you come to the place where the time of your departure is at hand, then you are ready. You are ready then because you have previously gotten yourself prepared. Apostle Paul says, I'm now ready. The time of my departure is at hand. It's time now for me to lay down this flesh. I know I'm about to be translated. I know I'm about to lay down this flesh. I know I'm about to die physically. So I'm ready, he says, to be offered. Another place in another scripture, the Apostle Paul says, I'm calling betwixt and between. I would really like to go and be with God. Listen to what he said, because that's far better. But I, I really need to stay here and the reason Paul said he needed to stay here then because he knew his time was not yet. He knew he hadn't finished doing what God had brought him here to do. So we must be in a state of preparedness even if we're not ready. If I go through this parking lot today and, and give a survey of how many people wish they could just go today, I doubt very seriously we have many people, even though it's better to depart and be with him, because most people feel like you're not finished living yet. Can I get a witness in here? So you say it's more needful for me to stay here because, because I haven't finished my course. And I believe there will come a day when you will be ready to depart. There will come a day when you actually want to lay this flesh down. There will come a day when you'll be tired of this thing called life. You feel like God will let you know you finished and he'll let you know that it's almost time for you to depart. And then you can say you're ready. It's just like that cruise. For the year up to, for the time up to the time when you go on the cruise, you're getting prepared. And then December comes. And when December comes, you'll then be ready. This is what I'm going to say, to depart. 
But before your departure, you need to be prepared. Why do I believe God is sending these messages? Because he wants us to get prepared. I think God knows, or I know God is telling us, that there's a church today in the earth that is so caught up in the temporal, caught up in this earth, caught up in this world, that we are not prepared to depart. And the reality is, our departure could be at hand. Why? Because you can depart here one of two ways. You can depart here with Jesus when he comes back to the earth. Or you can depart through the doorway of physical death where the angel of the Lord will come and escort you into the presence of God and you will then be with him in a place called paradise. Listen, if you are prepared, if you have set things in order, if you are if you have got your house in order and that's what the Lord is saying it's time now to get your house in order because God does have a place I'm gonna preach about heaven for several weeks heaven is a prepared place heaven is a real place it's what the Bible calls it's what in what the Bible calls the third heaven first heaven the second heaven we're gonna talk about this God lives in the third heaven when you look up and see this firmament, see these clouds, see the blue ether up above us, that's just the first heaven. God lives in the third heaven. Jesus and his Father are in the third heaven. And we must prepare and stay prepared even as if our departure is at hand because heaven is a real place. Only place you can learn about heaven is in the Bible. The Bible says heaven has beautiful gates and streets of gold. But the most impressive thing about heaven, my brothers and my sisters, is that in heaven you will be with Jesus. You will be with Jesus eternally. I want to tell you, that Bible you read, the whole book is about Jesus. From Genesis to Revelation, it's all about Jesus. Everything is all about Jesus. He has all of eternity wrapped up in Jesus and in heaven we're going to be with Jesus eternally wherever Jesus is is heaven now let's deal with the text and I'll let you go text says and we put it in context the disciples were a little upset because Jesus is now trying to get them ready for his departure trying to get them ready because as we know he's going to be killed he's going to be crucified he's trying to get them ready on one occasion he was even telling Peter some things and the other disciples and Peter actually rebuked Jesus when he started saying some things that didn't go quite with his flesh and Jesus had to look behind him and say get behind me Satan because you don't savor the things that are of God and what that is saying to us is Peter didn't really care at that particular time about the will of God, which was for Jesus to be crucified and taken out of the earth. But what Peter was thinking about was he was having some heaven on earth with Jesus. You know why? Because wherever Jesus went, he made everything all right. Can I tell you, when you get to heaven, everything is going to be all right. That's some good news. Be nothing wrong in heaven. Everything will be right. Everything will be perfect. Because wherever Jesus is, that's heaven. The disciples in the text were troubled because Jesus began to prepare them for his departure. So he says something to them. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. He tries to comfort them. If you believe in God, believe also in me. He says, in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so heaven is a real place you can't see it but the bible tells you about it. it's a real place in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you he says i go to prepare listen to this a place it's a real place in your bible underline place i go to prepare a place 
for you. Jesus says, don't get troubled, don't get distressed, don't get agitated. I want to tell you today, church, don't get distressed, don't get agitated, don't get troubled about all that's going on in this world. God has another place. Somebody say glory to God. He has another place that's better than this place. He has another place that's more wonderful than this place. Jesus said, don't get troubled, don't get distressed, don't get agitated. He said, if you trust God, now trust me. You know what time it is now, church? It's time to trust God. It's time to trust God. Then he says, my father has a house. Isn't that something? Jesus calls heaven his father's house. We pray the prayer, we call the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which is in heaven. Is that right? He says, my Father has a house or a home. His home is heaven. And my Father's house has many mansions. My Father's house has many mansions. The word mansions comes from the Greek word, which means dwelling places or places to stay. Can I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you get to heaven, you're going to have your own house. People don't preach about heaven, so I'm going to tell you. When you get there, you're going to have your own house. You're going to have your own house. I was sharing with folks the other day in the message of the week about telling people that they're not angels. That you're not angel, you'll never be an angel, you won't be an angel in heaven. And people like to use the scripture that says... When Jesus was asked whose wife a certain lady would be, because she had had several husbands, and Jesus says, when you get to heaven, you're going to be like angels, because angels don't get married, and they don't marry. So a lot of people have taken that to say, you're going to be like an angel, but Jesus was using that as an example to tell you that angels don't marry, and when you get in heaven, some of you are going to like this, your husband going to have his house, you're going to have yours. <laughs> so you better get all you can out your husband and your wife now when you get to heaven your wife ain't gonna cook you no meals <laughs> cooking will be all over I hear Pastor Della saying praise the Lord <laughs> but you're not gonna be an angel you're gonna have your own house somebody said to me I got a house in heaven got a house in heaven Many mansions, many dwelling places, places to stay. God has another place other than this place. And Jesus said, if it were not so, I would have told you. Now I'm going to drop this right here. We're going to take it up next week. But then Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. Say this with me. Say, Jesus has a prepared place just for me. But heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. The question I have to leave with you today is, are you prepared? Are you prepared? And in this time when all things are being talked about and all things are being preached, I wonder is anybody preaching, are you prepared for eternity? Not prepared here on earth to get some more stuff. Are you prepared for eternity? Everything here will be left here. Amen. Amen. Are you prepared for eternity? And I know I'm talking to the church, and the church has got to be prepared. Jesus said, when I come back, I'm not coming back for a tore up, messed up church. I'm coming back for a church a bride you never went to a wedding I haven't you may have and seen a dirty messed up bride stinking bride you go see a beautifully adorned bride because when a husband or her husband to be comes through the door and looks and he looks to the back of the church he wants to see something beautiful I'm hearing you. I hope you're hearing me today 
Jesus said he's ready for a bride to be prepared. Are you prepared? And that bride spends almost two days getting prepared. Getting that hair done, getting those nails done, getting someone to come professionally and put that makeup on them. Why? They want to be prepared. I'm going to tell you, Jesus wants a prepared church. Are you hearing me today? He's coming back for a prepared church. Are you prepared? This place, heaven, in the third heaven, is for prepared people. Look at verse 3. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Now here's the shout news that where I am, where I am, there you shall be also. Oh, it's shout news there. We're going to be in his presence. We're going to be in his presence. And in his presence is the fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Let me tell you something my brothers and my sisters. And we're going to paint a picture of heaven for you in these next few weeks. You don't want to miss heaven. You can afford to miss the next episode of your favorite program. You can afford to miss a sale at your favorite store. You can afford to miss an appointment at the doctor, but you cannot afford to miss heaven. You don't want to miss heaven. And so we get all this temporary gratification. We heap upon ourselves as much as we can. What is a person profited if they gain the whole world and mess around and lose their soul. And I know who I'm preaching to. I know I'm preaching to the church. That's who God told me to preach it to. What are you profit if you get everything on this earth and lose your soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Suppose you gain the whole world but miss heaven. You're in serious trouble. Jesus says he's prepared a place for you. Somebody said to me, said, my citizenship is in heaven. Man, that'll free you up right there. It'll free you from all this mess that's going on this earth. Say it again. My citizenship is in heaven. See, I'm just here passing through. I'm an ambassador for Jesus Christ. I'm representing a foreign place, another place, a better place. While I'm here, he supplies all of my needs. But one day I'm going back to my home. I'm going back to where I came from. You know, I've really enjoyed, I've really enjoyed being a grandfather. I got two grandsons. And every now and then, little children, I'm talking about before they get to the age of six, little children can say things that can actually astound you. Because what we don't understand, and I believe one reason they don't talk immediately when they come out is because they just left heaven. And sometimes little children, some of, you, some of you may think I'm crazy, but I don't care. Sometimes little children can say stuff to you and you wonder, where did you get that from? How did you know that? How do you know about some things that nobody ever told you. You know why? It's because they can't explain it, but because they haven't been long left heaven. Because God sent them down here from heaven. That's why you need to understand, you may not understand why the child is here, but there's not a child born that God didn't send. I don't care how they were conceived, they couldn't have come through this, come through from down from heaven without God. I'm preaching many of you responding. So children, little children, people try to say, you know, people, little children don't understand. Sometimes little children understand more about God and heaven than adults. That's why the Bible says you receive the kingdom like a little child. With meekness. Y'all better hear me today. 
Because this is nothing to be taken lightly. If you miss heaven, you got a problem. And you don't have a temporary problem. You have an eternal, an eternal problem. You got to be prepared. You got to be prepared. And now's the time to make preparation to live in this prepared place. Because he says, I'm going to come and get you. I'm coming back for you. And I'm going to receive you to myself. All of us have an appointment when Jesus will come and get us. And if you are prepared, that's a happy day. Because to depart and be with him is far better. There's nothing on this earth that can compare with being with Jesus. Because wherever Jesus is, that's heaven. But you got to be prepared. I hope you hear me. Prepared people, prepared people live with their goal. And when you have a goal, it helps you stay focused. And again, why is there so much mess in the church? Why is there so much turmoil in the church? Why? Say it plain, Lawson. Okay, Holy Ghost. Why is there so much sin in the church? Because we're not focused on heaven. That's why. We've taken heaven out to preaching and we now just preach about temporal things. And people are not focused. They're living, but they're not focused. The focus now is on us. Look at me. Look what I'm doing. Look what I have. Look how I look. Self-centered. Should be Christ centered. Amen. Amen. If anybody believes what I'm saying, blow your horn one time. So here's what you got to do. I close. There's two ways you prepare. How do you prepare? And again, imagine. Let me give you a quick little example. I got about five minutes. Imagine somebody important is coming to visit your home. Somebody really important is coming to pay you a visit at your house. You know what you'd probably do? You'd do a number of things to be prepared for their visit. I won't call anybody's name. I just said somebody really important. Somebody you think is really important. They come to visit you. You get you get you get your house prepared. You'd ensure not only that, you'd ensure that other people in your house were also prepared. If you had children you tell them, don't you know somebody important is coming? Go clean up your room. You tell them, you tell your, your husband, don't you know somebody important is coming? Go cut the grass. You clean up the kitchen, prepare something real nice. You try to be prepared for this important person. And let me tell you, it's time now to make sure your children are prepared. You need to do more than expose them to everything world. You need to expose them to some Bible. You know, I thought about something, and it made sense. It makes sense now. We used to pray a prayer that now children psychologists would probably say it's not good for children. But I tell you what the prayer did. The prayer put a fear. A godly fear. And again, children psychologists would say, that's not a good prayer for children to pray. It'll, it'll make them afraid. Let me tell you something. You need to have some godly fear. Here's what the prayer said. And you all heard it. Some of you may have said it. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my soul the Lord to keep. See, little child getting to know I got a soul. Watch this now. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. I used to pray that prayer. My mom used to pray it with me. We prayed the Lord's Prayer and then we prayed that little prayer. The Lord's Prayer started off, Our Father which art in heaven. See, you start out with a, with a heaven mindset. But then you get to that part where if I die, before I wake. Can I tell you, if more people went to sleep with the reality that I could possibly die before I wake. I don't like this preaching. I don't care. 
more people would live in a way that they would hope that their soul, the Lord, would take. You got to live a way that the Lord will take you with it. You don't go somewhere else. I endorse the prayer. Because I'd go to bed thinking, I hope I don't die before I wake. But guess what? Church, that's a possibility. I say that's a possibility. And if you're not ready to die, you got a problem. How you get ready, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. How you get prepared for this prepared place? All right, number one, most of you will check this off Say, I got that. Don't be so sure. That's why we got to be sure. You're trying to make me question my salvation. No, I'm trying to get you to be sure and be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. That's what time it is now to be sure. No time to it ain't no time for shucking and jiving. No time for playing around. It's time now to be sure. You know, God's been good to us as a church. I say he's been good to us as a church. We've had we've had several people in our church to have COVID. Several. And you know what? All of them still here. I haven't had to stand over anybody and say dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Because God has kept us. I'm going to preach in the house. And I know people. I know people. My wife's little niece, she went all the way to Spain. Had to come home because of COVID. And for two weeks, she's been in. She just got back out with COVID. Not even 30 years old. I don't mean she, she wasn't asymptomatic. She had symptoms. She was sick. And you know somebody that's had it. Some of you have been in this parking lot have tested positive. But guess what? Guess what? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh my God. But God. So how do you get ready? How do you be prepared so when your departure time comes? First of all, you got to be born again. Some people say, I got that one. Let's make sure you got it. You got to be born again. Jesus said, Verily, I say unto you, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let me tell you what being born again means. Being born again means that Jesus is your Lord. He's your Lord and your Savior. Your Lord and your Savior. Pastor Lawson, I, I repeat it. I repeat it, the salvation formula. Okay, what does it say? That if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. The who? The Lord Jesus. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. But you got to confess him as your Lord. He got to be your Lord. What does Lord mean? Lord means he's my master. He's my ruler. He's my owner. I relinquish my right. To do what I want to do to my master. I relinquish the control of my life. I present my body as a living sacrifice. Holy acceptable unto God. This is my reasonable service. And I will not be conformed to this world. But I'll be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I'm going to let my Lord take me through changes. I'm going to let him change me and change my life. Change my attitudes. Change my disposition. Change the way I behave. He's my Lord. Amen. 
confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. He's not dead. He's alive. I serve a risen Savior. And he's my Lord. And if he's my Lord, he'll be Lord over stuff for me. He'll Lord over the devil. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. you Gotta submit yourself to your Lord. He gotta be more than just somebody you visit every night. He gotta be your Lord. He's gotta be your master. She don't preach this no more. The Bible says, Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. The Bible says, it's a straight and narrow way that leads to life. And few there be that find it, but because broad is the way. There are many that go in that way. The broad way. You can't go to heaven on Broadway. I said, you can't go to heaven on Broadway. Don't let nobody fool you. Ain't you know why I preach like this? I preach like this because I'm planning on going to heaven. Jesus said, if you're preaching the other gospel, you're going to be accursed. He says, if you preach something, if you feed my little ones, anything but the pure, uncut truth, and cause them to stumble. It would be better if you tied a rock around your neck and jumped in the noose river. And I'm not jumping in the river. I'm not going to hell. I'm going to tell it just like it is. Because I can't take no Lexus to heaven. Can't take no... No Chrysler 300 to heaven. Can't take no square footage to heaven. All of us got to stay here. And the other way, number one, you got to be born again for real. Point somebody in the car next to you. I know your window's up, but point to them and say, you got to be saved for real. And then, Last point, after making him Lord, the Bible says, Jesus said, why you call me Lord and don't do what I say? Why do you call me Lord and you don't do what I say? Why do you, he said, why do you call me Lord but don't do what I say? Why do you call me Lord? I was talking to a young man just the other night who was contemplating ministry. And I, was, I said, I'm going to tell you something. You need to count up the cost. I said, because this ain't no popularity contest. You ain't going to be popular if you tell the truth. Because you tell the truth to people that's living in lies, they're going to hate your guts. Because they're living in lies. But my God, when you find the truth, and you know the truth, the truth will make you free. Last point, how I'm going to make sure I'm prepared to go to heaven. Matthew 7 and 21. I close like this almost every week. I don't know if you've been watching it, but I've been preaching it. So it's, it's on high. He says... Not everybody, this is Jesus, that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. You got to do more to say, Lord, Lord, Lord. He says, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Pastor Lawson, how can I know that I'm going to heaven? You got to do his will. I didn't say you do your will. You got to do his will. And sometimes, I'll tell you what happens. Your will and his will clash. But you know what you got to do? You got to come to the point where you say, not my will, but your will be done. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Sometimes, sometimes it'll make you sweat, sweat, almost sweat bullets of blood. Because there are things you want to do and things you want to say. Whose car am I in? But Holy Spirit restrains you. He says, don't you go there. That's a poor witness. Don't you say that. Don't you do that. But you still have a choice. Am I going to do my will? Or am I going to do his will? If you go into heaven, you're going to have to do it. Jesus said this. Jesus said this. He said, not, and this is Mr. Grace and Truth. This is Jesus. Grace and Truth came by Jesus. And Jesus said, not, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is him. Matthew 7, 21. Many will say to me in, in that day, 
Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name cast out devils. In thy name done many wonderful works. He said, I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Because what you're doing when you work in iniquity, self-will. That's what it was. Never lose sight of heaven. Every night before you go to bed, think about your eternal goal, your long-term goal. When this life is over, I want to go to heaven. Anybody in your car right now can say that. Come on, say it. Say, when this life is over, I want to go to heaven. When, I, when this life is over, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. See, we've been tricked now. We've been tricked and duped because now we believe, and I'm going to talk about it. We believe everybody that died go to heaven. The devil's a lie. It's like now, all somebody got to do is die. All you got to do is die. And you, you better play that organ because I better get sloppy. All you got to do is die and you in hell. The devil is a liar. And this mess they preaching now is a bunch of, a pack of lies. That's why I tell you all the time, i told you ever since you've been here, if I ever stop preaching the truth, get your hat and coat and leave. Because this thing ain't about popularity. It's about eternity. That's what it's all about. It's about eternity. So don't feel bad. You may never drive the nicest car. You may never live in the biggest house. You may never have the finest clothes. But you could go to heaven. And guess what? Up there you're going to have your own house. And one moment. My God, that'll be one moment in the presence of Jesus will pay for it all. That's why they wrote that song. Said, "When I see Jesus, Amen." That's it. All my troubles and trials. How many y'all had some troubles and trials on this side? All my troubles and trials soon be over. I say this and I quit for real, for real. It's a bad thing. To catch hell in life and then have to spend eternity in hell. I'm preaching to the church. I'm preaching to the church of Jesus Christ. That's what I'm preaching to. Bow your head, close your eyes. Father, thank you for your word. Help us. Help us, help us, help us. To count up the cost. Help us to know what lies in the balance. Help us to know. Help us to get a glimpse of eternity. Help us to make heaven our goal. Help us to know that earth can give us nothing compared to what is in eternity with you. Help us to pay the price of holiness and righteousness. Help us to live right. Holy Spirit, help us to please the Father. Help us to please the Father. We want to be with you eternally. We want to be around your throne. We want to be in that number. We want to be around your throne saying holy, holy, holy with the angel, with the beast, with the heavenly host. We want to be praising you eternally living to eternity, drinking from the fountain, eating from the tree of life forever and ever. We want to be with you, Father, when you come back to earth. When heaven comes to earth, we want to come down with you. We want to help you rule here for that millennia. We want to be here with you. Forgive us of our backslidings. Forgive us of our slackness. Please forgive us for our bad attitudes, wrong dispositions. Forgive us for times we have mistreated our brothers and our sisters. Forgive us when we've been downright honorary and mean. We ask you to forgive us. Forgive us the time we have treated our spouse with dignity and respect. Forgive us for times we have provoked our children even to wrath. Help us, Lord. 
to be the church you are looking for. We love you. We thank you. Holy Spirit, help us. You are our helper. Help us today. In Jesus' name. Lift those holy hands all over this parking lot and just give God praise. Oh, in your car, just lift your hands. We're ready to go now. Just lift your hands. God is good to us all. Won't you take a minute and just tell the Lord thank you for keeping you even in the midst of this pandemic. Tell him thank you for supplying all your needs. Tell him thank you for keeping your body strong. If you roll to church with somebody, we can really pray a prayer. I got a call. We got a call last night from Mother Doris Williams. I hope you're watching Doris. She called last night. And she said, and you know, whether you know or not, she's been hospitalized for about six or seven weeks. Longer than that. But she's home now. And she called me. Doris, I hope you're watching. I hope somebody, your little sisters got this so you can see it. She called me last night. She said, Pastor, I'm home. And I'm doing good. She said, I'm not walking yet, but I'm home. She said, would you have the whole church to pray for me? That's what she said. She said, tomorrow, would you get the whole church to pray for me? She said, because I believe. I said, Doris, we'll do it. Somebody's in the car with you. Grab them by the hand. She's a, she's a part of our team. Yeah. Yeah. Every day I knew we need to gain the devil. Yeah. Look at the person in the car next to you. Pull up and say, I'm, I'm agreeing with you in this prayer. I'm agreeing with you. If there's somebody in the parking lot that says, put me in this prayer, Pastor. Hit your horn one time. Just one time. The Bible says, pray you one for another. Pray for one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervor prayer of a righteous person makes tremendous power. Doris, we pray for you. If there's anybody else watching this on Facebook or any other media, we're going to put you in this prayer too. Guys, kept us. Man, I'm going to cut some carpet when I get back in that church. Y'all going to talk about me because I'm going to act like I have lost my mind. Because God has brought us through this pandemic. Just like the children that came out of Egypt. Without a feeble one. Is that what it said, Will? Not a sick, a feeble one amongst us. I'm still believing that. I got pastors that I know that preach multiple funerals. Stand over multiple graves because of COVID. Somebody need to praise God right now. Let's pray. Pastor Della going to pray. Dodge, we're praying for you. We're praying for you that blew your horn. We're praying for all of us. That God will continue to keep us. Hallelujah. And as you're in your car... If you would just lay hands on your body, if you're resisting any type of sickness, just lay hands on your body, maybe wherever the uh, attack that the enemy may be trying to uh, afflict you with right now. And we're going to come together in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you that you are the Lord that healeth us. You sent your word and you healed us. You delivered us from all destruction. And we thank you and we praise you. Even you let us know that those who believe can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So even as we pray for Mother Doris this morning and Sister Glenda Williams, who just recently had surgery and others who've asked for prayer, we're believing right now, as even as you lay hands on yourself in your cars, that you recover 
because the Lord said in his word that those who believe can lay hands on the sick. You can lay hands on yourself and you can recover. We thank you right now that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes you are healed who his own self bore our sins and his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. And by his stripes you were healed. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, bore all of our pains. We don't have to bear them because over 2,000 years ago, he bore them on the tree for us. And all we have to do now is just give him the glory and honor and praise and thank him for being our healer. We thank you, Father. Your word said the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And we thank you. We are praying this prayer of faith, believing that you're going to do what you said and raise us up for your glory. Say that we bind you and give you no opportunity. We thank you. We are speaking to that mountain of sickness and even speaking to the mountain of all diseases COVID and anything else that would try to attack us and we are saying to, to be removed and be cast in the sea we don't doubt in our heart and we believe what we have prayed will come to pass we thank you Lord we pray believing and we pray, pray receiving in Jesus name we pray amen somebody shout glory to God three times Put those holy hands together and give God a hand clap of praise. Somebody shout, I'm on my way to heaven and I'm 